Yesterday, in the age of 42, he passed away. Muhammad was a... I'd rather not be remembered as an addict and an alcoholic who put his family through hell. Yeah, you know what? I don't know why, but I'm quite moved, to be honest. It really shows how sad these people are. The convicted racist politician who is notorious for his so-called Quran burning tours. And then his car flipped over. Just because it brings peace to your soul and peace to your heart, it is the truth. You're trying to build a Dawa center here. Islam is violent by nature, my friends. If a Christian goes and kills a bunch of Muslims, you're going to blame every Christian for it? No. Who are you going to blame for it? No. First Samuel 15:3. He ended up putting the Quran to the test. Logie, die moet worden tegengegaan. Verzoekt de regering de islam zo veel mogelijk uit Nederland te bannen. I became much more happy after I became Muslim. So I would like to invite everybody to become Muslim. <laughs>
Yes. Uh, we're we're together. We're eating. We're having some lunch. My father's there. Yes. Uh, uh, how was your experience in Bosnia? It was a very good experience, actually. It was a very positive experience. I mean, obviously, I love engaging with you as always, but the du'at that were there, the brothers that were there who wanted to share Islam with hikmah, with wisdom, with hasana, with good preaching, they were there. They wanted to be touched, moved, and inspired so they can call humanity with that wise, compassionate goodness. And I was just given the opportunity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to engage with the du'a, to learn from them as well, but also engage with them so we could uplift each other. And as you know, the Bosnian space, the social political space is not an easy one. It brings sad memories because we all remember what happened. And I think it's very important for us to engage in this type of work because the beautiful thing about calling people to Islam, there's many layers to it, of course. You want to make Allah's word the highest. You want people to go to Jannah. You want people to be guided. But there are so many layers to the da'wah. And one aspect of this, especially when it comes to social political realities, is that you could bring people together. Allah says in the Quran that he created us from a male and a female, and he basically created us into different tribes and nations in order for us to know one another, to know one another. Now, what's interesting here, if you look at the classical exegesis, the classical explanation of this verse, Many scholars explained that this does not mean trying to find out what makes you common. It means find out what makes you different. Find out what makes you distinct. And why is that important? Think about it from a social perspective. Fear happens. Anxiety happens. All of these things happen because there are differences. But once you explain the differences, you explain the differences, you give it a, a humanity, if you like, you give it, give the truth behind these differences, those differences no longer become sources of, of fear or anxiety, but they become sources of getting to know one another and coming together in different tribes and nations and groups. Hopefully, those people do become Muslim, but if they don't, it, at least it lessens the anxiety and the fear. So from a Bosnian context, we don't want that to ever happen again. And one way, and there are many ways, but one way of trying to ensure it doesn't happen again, what happened in Bosnia in the 1990s, is actually to engage in da'wah. Because there's that sense of that sense of getting to know one another, to remove those anxiety and those fears. Yes, hate is always going to hate. You're going to have those ideologues. You're going to have those nationalists. You're going to have those people who, who don't want Muslims and humanity to flourish. But we have to do our role. And I think engaging in da'wah facilitates that, inshallah. And you reminded me, uh, you were talking about the trees, and then I went back and researched that, and you were dead on. There has been a lot of research on the actual communication bet between trees. Yes. And then we had, that's reminding me of the conversation that we had. Of course, and yes, you, you reminded you me. Do you remember that? And you pointed yes. to a specific book, and yes. that's that. you were talking about the communication between the tree, and then it reminded us of the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi talked about, because some people get caught up on this, like, come on, how could trees speak? And there's modern-day research on this, and you actually you were articulating yeah. that in our last discussion so, there in Bosnia. Yeah, there was a book, it's called, if I remember correctly, The Hidden Life of Trees, and trees actually communicate in their own way with each other. And they almost like live in communities and there's a sense of tree the altruism. Like trees will sacrifice themselves for other trees. And it's quite interesting because I always ask people, are you a beach person or are you a forest person? And me, I'm more of a forest person because it's alive. You know, trees are communicating. Trees are living in communities and they're sharing wow. and they're communicating. And for me, you get a sense of that, you know. So there is something in the tree huggers, <laughs> you know, and mm. you have these trees. These hippies who hug trees, obviously we don't do it for, you know, should key reasons, but there's a sense of energy when it comes to trees, right? And we know the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the narration and the story mm -hmm. where the tree actually cried. Yeah. So that is not far-fetched, especially when you look mm -hmm. at today's modern research. And what's interesting, when a group of community or trees are together and there's an animal that basically bites or takes the leaf of one of the trees that tree was sent like a gas signal to the other trees 
and those trees will make their leaves more bitter so the animals will be repelled it's very very fascinating so there's so mm. much in, in that okay so getting from the blast from the past you remind me of really good memories um i really really enjoyed uh being with you and so did my father and tell me this okay so as i opened up you eat greek food you speak greek you're greek and you know yes. with the history of uh bosnia also and that area there bosnia is like the they say the the jerusalem of europe and there's been some tensions over the years so what you would think someone from a greek background your story's out there people can go ahead and look it up but just for the people tuning in for the very first time and they're seeing hamza Andreas zorsis and he's writing books on islam i mean these are not anti-islam books are they no no you would think from, yeah. but, but you would think, but there's a lot of Greeks, not just yourself. So you're you're a Muslim Greek. Yes, is that correct? What did it for yeah. you? Just real, real briefly. Then we'll get into the the other things we want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I became Muslim around 22 years ago, I believe, in 2002, and so 21 years ago, 22 years ago, and Alhamdulillah, I became Muslim for three main reasons. Number one, Islam made sense to me. It satisfied my heart. It satisfied my mind. Number two, I really appreciate the brotherhood in Islam, that sense mm -hmm. of brotherhood that transcended nation, transcended blood, if you like, very close brotherhood. And number three, I was attracted to many Islamic values. So those were the three main reasons. Beautiful. So we got it made sense, the brotherhood and the values. And we often say that if these people would go ahead and pick up the Quran and they would put it to truly, sincerely put it, you know, implement it into their lives. They wouldn't end up. It's a sad reality that many people like these we're going to talk about. And we want good for them also. We want, yes. we have love for humanity. And we want them to go ahead and experience uh, what we're experiencing. So they don't end up like these people taking their own lives. So I want to get into uh, this, this recent one. Actually, we'll start off. From which I talked about before, because this seems a, a common trend. And I just, someone just shared with me this recent, some TikToker, before we get into him, he was also someone who was uh, insulting Prophet Muhammad and Islam. There was this, this individual, and then it's like a pattern. You can see their lives just unfolding in front of us. So let's stop with this and get your reaction, and we'll go one by one. They get depressed, and they don't want to live anymore, and in the end... They take their own lives. This Quran burner in the picture, it's a Quran burner that is living in Norway. Yesterday, in the age of 42, he passed away. This picture on the screen is from the 26th of November, when he was trying to destroy our Dawah stand in Oslo, in Norway. They get depressed and they don't want to live anymore, and in the end, they take their own lives. There are some of the chats between Swedish-Danish politician Rasmus Paludan and young boys on the internet. The convicted racist politician, who is notorious for his so-called Quran-burning tours and anti-Islam hate, spends extensive time on social media platform Discord, chatting with young boys about sexually explicit topics. So, <laughs> Although Paludan has been charged with 14 offenses in the past, including racism, defamation, and traffic laws, his online chats did not elicit any action under Danish law. Okay, before we get into the new current ones, what do you think? What's unpackaged what's going through your mind when you see, we talked about what drew you to Islam, the values, right? This moral code. What kind of moral code do you think that people are, are living by and what's driving them at the end to take their own lives or to go down this road of, you know, trying to uh, pick up young boys. Yeah, you know what? I don't know why, but I'm quite moved, to be honest. Um, because it just shows a few things. Number one, the power of the Quran. And it shows, mm. it really shows how sad these people are. Now, there's a very beautiful ayah in the Quran in the 20th chapter, in the 124th verse. Allah says, but whoever turns away from my reminder will certainly have a miserable life. And then we will raise them up blind on the day of judgment. Now, many people may know, and if you don't know, let's explain this. What does the reminder mean? According to the Mufassirin, which means those classical Orthodox scholars that explain the Quran, 
also known as exegetes. They do exegesis. They explain the Quran. The reminder is another name for the Quran. So this is so powerful. But whoever turns away from my reminder, meaning the Quran itself, will certainly have a miserable life. Then we'll raise them up blind on the day of judgment. And this is very fascinating because if you think about this surah itself, right? The beginning of the surah, what does Allah say in the second verse? He says, we have not revealed the Quran to you, O Prophet, to cause you distress. In other words, you can mirror the meaning that Allah has revealed the Quran to bring a sense of sa'ada, a sense of happiness. But if you go all the way down to 124, verse 124, Allah says those who reject the reminder of the Quran itself, they would have a miserable life. Wallahi, this is so powerful. And it goes to show those people who hate the Quran, basically it's a form of self-hatred. Let me explain something. I learned this from a scholar once. You will find yourself in the Quran. Brothers, sisters, friends, humanity, you will find yourself in the Quran. In reality, you don't read the Quran. The Quran reads you. And you will find yourself in the Quran. And you have to really check your heart to understand if you're approaching this book with sincerity, with, with a yearning for, for the creator, or is it to find something negative or to impose your own ego and your own negativity? Because... Many of these people that pointed the finger at the Quran, the three, there are three fingers pointing back. This politician, he was caught doing things with or expressing himself in an inappropriate, inappropriate, inappropriate way with young children. This other, I think, Norwegian fellow who was burning the Quran or Danish fellow, he actually uh, committed suicide, right? He's pointing the thing at the Quran that it's destructive, it's, there's no guidance, but look at his life. And this is very interesting because in the third chapter of the Quran, in verse 7, Allah talks about the ambiguous verses and the unambiguous verses, meaning the, the verses that have potentially multiple interpretations or the open to interpretation and the verses that are very clear. And Allah tells us, gives us advice to stick to those verses that are very clear, they're the mother of the book, the foundation of the book. We understand the whole Quran through these verses. And Allah warns us the more ambiguous type of verses. People who have a sickness in their heart are going to try and do some kind of interpretation. Their sickness is going to come out in a way. So from that perspective, when people approach the Quran and they're already sick, they're already full of hatred, then they would find themselves in the Quran. They would find themselves in the Quran. They won't find a valid interpretation, but they would find themselves because that's the nature of the book of Allah. It can guide you or it could be a source of your misguidance as well because you are the one who has closed the door to guidance. You have pushed away the guidance and you are rejecting the message of Islam in its clear form because they... Just like Allah says in chapter 3, verse 7, that they're trying to twist and do dodgy interpretations of the ambiguous verses, right? So from that perspective, my kind of theory is you would find yourself in the Quran and you see that uh, in these people, they, they point fingers at the Quran. They say the Quran is full of, you know, dark things because they don't have a true understanding and they don't interpret the Quran the way the Quran tells them to understand the Quran, which is to see it with through the eyes or through the lenses of the clear, unambiguous verses. And you see things far more holistically and you see the picture, not just a pixel. And from that perspective, I think uh, this just shows to us how pow powerful the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. These people are um, sick people and they have found, they have imposed the sickness on the Quran and it's bounced back on them, as Allah says in chapter 20, verse 124, that if you reject this reminder, you're going to have a miserable life. And look what they're doing. They're, they're doing inappropriate things or saying inappropriate things with young children and or they're committing suicide or they're having a depressed life. And Allah says they're going to be raised blind on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection. 
and may Allah protect us, you know. And you know Amen. what's interesting as well, Eddie, the burning books. I mean, isn't this what you know backward medieval people used to do? Yeah, <laughs> burn books, right? And then you know what the irony is? They're framing it as if this is freedom of speech. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how they're framing it: freedom of speech. But and they're forgetting their own tradition. Because the objectives of freedom of speech, as John Stuart Mill said, one of the famous British philosophers, the main objective of freedom of speech was human flourishing. In other words, we want truth. We want to account, hold power to account. We want progress, scientific progress. How does burning a book facilitate truth? How does burning a book allow progress? How does burning a book, you know, give you civilizational advancement this is not freedom of speech this is uncivilized behavior and mm-hmm. this is what we need to tell people you you you're, you need to read the quran not burn the quran so you could be elevated you could be guided you could progress as a civilization and it's the mark of a defeated civilization that they actually celebrate burning religious texts this is, let's just be honest, it is the mark, it is the sign of a defeated civilization if they celebrate and protect the burning of books. And this goes against the main objectives of freedom of speech anyway, which were about human flourishing, it was about progress, scientific advancement, and burning books does not facilitate that at all. Mm-hmm. I like what you said, self-hatred, a projecting of what, what's in. You have people with... Uh with dark hearts and then they're they're talking about there's darkness in in the quran but then you see this darkness in their hearts and they're trying to end up projecting it out wordly from what's within let's go on here i know you also you're pretty um into uh boxing and recently uh, again we don't condone any violence or uh, harming anybody but this was uh, something that was that came up uh, with a, another quran burner i wanted to get your uh, feedback um because you like to throw a, a nice jab and hook cross. So I don't know if you have um, have any comments on this. Fight. Seems like this is a, another uh, Quran burner that that popped up, and then somebody put on some boxing gloves and uh, challenged him, I guess, to a to a one on one fight. Uh, wh- what were your thoughts on that? Well, it, well, I, I don't know what to say. Really. I mean, I just came from the back from the gym about an hour or so ago. I did about yeah. seven rounds on the on the back. Uh-huh. Um, so it's quite interesting you mentioned that. So, I mean. I don't know the context. That person was a Quran burner. The other person seems to be a Muslim and he wants to take some kind of revenge or he wants to basically hold him to account. But one thing is, it's quite interesting that the guy who was burning the Quran, you know, he can't, he doesn't look like he can fight at all. Secondly, he tried to pick up a weapon like a coward. Um, that's one thing I wanted to mention. The second thing is, look, in our context, we have to understand da'wah. So Allah says in the Quran, in chapter 16, verse 124, 125, Call to the sabil, the way of your Lord. How? Allah says, hikmah, with hikmati, with wisdom, and preach in what? In the best way, with goodness, hasana. Now, this is very important. Allah doesn't say, call to the way of your Lord with ilm, with knowledge. He says with hikmah. Because what is hikmah? Hikmah, yes, means the sunnah. But broadly, it also means from an Islamic perspective that you have a goal that is pleasing to Allah and you apply your ilm, your knowledge in a particular context to achieve that goal. This is very deep. I want everyone to listen to this. Hikmah is you have a goal that is pleasing to Allah and you apply your ilm, your knowledge, and you apply in a particular context to achieve that goal. 
And hasana, goodness, also includes ihsan, excellence, ikhlas, sincerity, includes being merciful, and it includes doing the right thing in the right way, which sometimes means you have to be assertive. Now, in our context of the Qur'an burning, we have to understand what our goal is as a community in Europe, what the context is and how we apply ilm in that context. And I would say this type of person, instead of us showing any type of aggression, because that's what they want from us. They want us to be aggressive. They want us to show violence. They want to provoke us. But we have to have a sense of elevated standard in this context. Hilm. What is hilm? Hilm is one of the characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and hell means forbearance, being patient with aggression, being patient with negativity, being patient with hatred. Because Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse 33 and 34, Allah says in verse 33, call to the way of your Lord. Call the who is sorry, who is best in speech than the one who calls to the way of the Lord, the one who calls to Tawheed, the one who calls to the oneness of Allah, does righteousness and says, I am one of those who submit. That's verse 33. Verse 34, beautiful verse. This is the verse of, of helm, of forbearance. Good and evil are not the same. Good and evil are not the same. Repel by that which is better. And between two people, if there's any hatred, it will turn to intimate friendship. And this is difficult except for the patient. Interestingly, in the Arabic here, Allah doesn't use the Arabic word repel. And he doesn't, so he uses the word Arabic repel. And it's not followed by a direct object. Allah doesn't say repel evil. It's open-ended, repel by that which is better. And the ulama, the scholars, they say, repelling by that which, be which is better means repelling by what is more beautiful and what is more virtuous. In this context, in our, our ideological context, in the context of Europe, in the context that they want us to look like the evil bad man or the aggressive man, we need to now have helm forbearance. And we need to repel by that which is more beautiful and by that which is more virtuous in this context. And between two people, there's any hatred, it would turn to intimate friendship. And this is what we need to do in that particular context. So I don't condone brothers going out there, putting boxing gloves on, and basically, you know, trying to attack this guy, what we should do is show a sense of hilm, just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you remember the famous hadith, the prophetic tradition, when the Jewish man came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he pulled him by the collar or the neck, and he demanded for repayment of a loan, and one Sahabi companion was acting a bit assertively or aggressively, and the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reacted was with hilm and forbearance. He gave advice to the companion to basically calm down and he told and he told him you should basically advise this man to ask for his repayment, the repayment of a loan in a better way. And upon seeing this, the Jewish man became Muslim because he was looking for the three signs of prophethood. He saw two of the signs and the final sign was forbearance, helm, meaning that we forbear, we repel aggression, we, we repel hate, hatred with what is more virtuous and what is more better and what is more beautiful. And that's how we should be in the context of da'wah. Yes? Okay, fine. I do understand where the brother is coming from. He's probably frustrated. He's angry. But remember, what does Allah say? This is very difficult except for the patient. But, so we should in, in, uh, cultivate that patience, have taqwa, have God consciousness, hold on to the Quran, hold on to the sunnah and deal with these people in the most Allah-centric way. Meaning, what is the goal that we're trying to achieve? Remember, da'wah is about hikmah, an Allah-pleasing goal, an Allah-centric goal. We apply our ilm, our knowledge in the particular context that we're engaging with. And in a European context with Islamophobia, with the liberal hegemony, with the ideological forces against the Muslims, us being minorities and all of these things, it's time for us to hold on, sort of, hold on to Surah Fusilat, uh, chapter 41, verses 33 and 34. Call to Allah with righteousness. Say we're one of the Muslims, we're one of those who submit and we repel anything but that which is better. And between two people with any hatred, it will turn to intimate friendship. And that's what we should be focused on in our particular context. All right, moving along. So 
before we get into this one, also had the, the person who had his car flipped over. He got into a chase, right? I don't know if you saw that one, that clip where the one who was coming to the to the brothers there in, in Norway and then some of the women, they came up next to him and they started chasing him and then his car flipped over. His car actually oh, yeah, flipped. Do you remember um, that one? Just like, why? what are you trying to accomplish at the end? I like what you said, what brought you to Islam. It made sense. The brotherhood, the values, there's, there's a gift that the creator is giving you. You have this book instead of burning it, open it, read it, sit with the Muslims. I come a whole new brother gonna help us to pressure going and the next one in line is there is no god muhammad was a warlord he did not speak to god he was a bad man i'd rather not be remembered as an addict and an alcoholic who put his family through hell. But unfortunately, that's also part of me. An atheist TikToker by the name of Von Vindy, whose real name is Joe, died after committing suicide. The TikToker who insulted the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he released a short video saying he was an addict and an alcoholic who put his family through hell before taking his own life. Our condolences to the family. So what can we say? You see a consistency, a trend here. The people who end up going down this path are people who end up usually, like in these cases, taking their own lives. They're unhappy. They're involved in many things that are just destroying them from within. And then they end up projecting that. And then they do a lot of these wicked and evil things like insulting over 2 billion people. Why would you do that? If you're unhappy with yourself and you're not able to figure out the purpose of life, why you've been created, why you're here, you're miserable, a happy person is projecting these good, the good energy. But this unhappy person who is miserable for within, he's not trying to change the world for the better himself. You see what he's doing, make a mockery of himself. And while he's insulting to over 2 billion people, like we said, so... Hamza Zors is with us. We have some little technical difficulty here. It was great having you on the program, my brother. Inshallah, we're going to have to continue again. We lost you there due to these technical difficulties that we're having. So let's go ahead and conclude, everybody. There's one person that I want you guys to think of. Uh, there's been a couple, actually. One that comes to mind is uh, Joram Van. Die moet worden tegengegaan, verzoekt de regerende islam zoveel mogelijk uit Nederland te bannen. Glenn Verin, he was also somebody who was a staunch opponent to the Quran, to Muslims. He was a politician and he was vigorously going and doing things like, like these people were doing. And he ended up putting the Quran to the test. So instead of burning the Quran, he read the Quran. And he found what Hamza Zors has found. I became much more happy after I became Muslim. So I would like to invite everybody to become Muslim. Just because it brings peace to your soul and peace to your heart. It is the truth. It resonates with heart and soul. At least look at it from an Islamic perspective. Try to read and study the life of the Prophet. Try to understand what the Muslims believe. Not so much the behavior of Muslims, because there are a lot of Muslims that don't live like Muslims. Including myself, I don't always live like a Muslim and shoot. So what can we conclude from this? Don't burn the Quran, read the Quran, come and connect with the Muslims, visit your local mosque, ask your questions, engage. And if you go to the deanshow.com, we will send you a copy for free. That's right. My gift to you, the Quran. And if you have questions, call, tell them I sent you, tell them Eddie sent me. And I, because naturally, if you've been exposed to much of the fake news, the false information, the lies, half truths, it might affect you. We totally understand and get that. So it's your right to ask questions. Be sincere in, about it, though. Be sincere. Call 1 800 662 Islam, 662 4752, and ask. I heard this, this, and the other. Please, can you explain that? You might be scared thinking Islam, Muslims are the boogeyman coming to get you. 
It's laughable to us, but to you, we can understand when you've been fed the wrong information. And now it is manufactured fear. They are perpetuating this stuff. And you're naturally, you're ignorant. You don't know. That's what ignorance is. You just don't know. But it's your choice. Do you want to get informed? Do you want to stay in the bliss of ignorance? Or do you want to be enlightened? Do you want to get to know? Do you want to go ahead and keep adding one plus one is seven? One plus one is five? Or do you want someone to teach you? Now, the correct addition to that is one plus one is two. You know, the light bulb goes on. You'll feel better. You'll feel much better about yourself. I'm telling you. So visit the Muslims love. They love when people come visit the mosque and engage with us. Recently I had an experience and I saw a, a Christian outside and I was like, man, it's a great opportunity to talk to him. But this guy is screaming at the top of his lungs. We're coming out of what's called Juma. And this guy's not engaging. He's there preaching and he's there shouting and he's not sitting there and talking with us, asking questions. Uh, he's coming along like he knows, but he doesn't know. And what, what's happening, he's chasing people away. And this is where religion in general, and we would ask the Christian community for people like this. We're coming out of Juma. And you got a person like this screaming and yelling. How you doing, my the friend? The five pillars of Islam. How you doing? I'm not talking to you right now. You're a solo. You You're trying to build a Dawa center here. Islam is violent by nature, so my friends. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We went to the streets to ask Americans about Islam. Here's what they said. Do you know anything about Islam? No. Do you know anything about Islam? No, sadly. Do you know anything about Islam? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Islam? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what Islam means? Islam? Uh, no. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. That's what you've been told, that Muslims are out to kill you all? Well, that's what they say on TV. Anything. I know it's in the Middle East, isn't it? Well, then you're going to have four wives. Brothers and sisters, as you can see, there are so many Americans who don't know about Islam. We need your help to change that. Help us to build the Dean Center, the first mega dawah center in America. Click the donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. That's surah not the way. 9 was written Can last, and Surah 9 what is the mean? most violent chapter of the Quran. Hey, you want to have a talk? That just like we, we hold to account if somebody is stepping out of line, having some extreme radical behavior, we, the community, we will talk to this person. We will engage with them. We will try to help them rectify their ways and tell them they don't represent us. We've done this so many times on the program, condemning that fringe element. And this, I'm sure, this is in your community, a fringe element that tomorrow can do something very violent and extreme because what person altogether, you're standing in front of a house of worship. Imagine the Muslims were doing that, standing in front of a church, a synagogue, and screaming and yelling. The news will be all over this. He's thinking that this is like what Islam preaches and teaches and whatnot. So if this guy wants to engage with the Muslims or anybody else, we are actually very elated. When you come, we'll come and we'll invite you in and go ahead and ask any question. As long as you're sincere, you're genuine. You're not trying to go ahead and, you know, be a smart aleck and, you know, look for trouble. I mean, where are you going to go with that? So when a person is really trying to connect, make the human connection, we have so many things in common. Let's get the elephant out of the room. Obviously, we don't believe that Jesus is a... He's not a God, a literal son of God. Okay, we can agree to disagree. You guys believe he's God, Trinity, etc. We believe that God Almighty is one and alone worthy of worship, that nothing should be a worship alongside with God, that Jesus called people to worship the Creator. In Aramaic, Allah. That's how you say in Aramaic, you say Allah. That's how you call on God. That's the language he spoke. Sister language to that is the Arabic language. And there's a whole chapter named after his blessed mother called Miriam. So you'll see that we do not say any disrespectful thing about Jesus. Okay, so we get this out of the way. We get this out of the way that we can agree to disagree just like you might have in your own family, someone who you disagree with. So we disagree upon this. But what about all the things that we agree on? That the sexualization of children at this young age, it should not be happening. We could stand together in solidarity to this. We can go ahead and work on many of these other things that we agree with, like the family structure, that there is a 
way that God created and it's through marriage and there's a male and a female and all these other hundreds of genders. No, this is not found in the Bible, in the Quran or, or any religion. So this is something that we can work together to protect our communities, our families from what's happening now. You can see this, but if we're coming, if we're having people like this guy, the prophecy hey, about buddy, Jesus buddy. Christ, my friends. talk to this guy. Hello. If you make Jesus Lord and believe the gospel, my friends, you can See, be saved. We the really invite people to come to the mosque, you, to my sit, friends. The Bible to go says, ahead and by his grace we are saved when have we some water, have some it's tea. It's a gift from God. You, well, you got this guy screaming. It, with you. Let's try again. A God who wants hey, to have a relationship with you. How you doing? A God who wants to have a relationship with you. What's your name? You guys, the Bible, says, the Bible says, the Bible says, Surah 9 was written last, some okay? Some Surah 9, is that what you want to guys. promote? Violence? I know who you are. How you doing? I'm filled with the Holy How Spirit. You, doing, you need to is repent, the, dude. Holy You're promoting a violent, a violent satanic this is what the Holy religion in our, in our country. How you doing? You're if a Christian goes and kills a bunch of Muslims, you're going to blame every Christian for it? No. Who are you going to blame for it? Yeah. So if a Muslim does an act of terrorism, why are you blaming the religion for it? Show me in scripture. I'll show you from your scripture. 1 Samuel 15, 3. They were going against God's word. So killing innocent children. This is in your Bible in front of you. Yeah. So this is not the word of God then because it's got the words of humans that are wrong. Well, yeah. So who made the Quran? A human. No, no. The Quran is revealed by Allah with perfection. Not a single mistake in it. Have you ever read the Quran? I read some. I'm going to give you a Quran. Just read it. And give, give me, give me this thing. <laughs> you can't be out here promoting hate against Islam and stuff, bro. You're right. That's not happening. All right. You're, right. You're gonna read the Quran. Coming and screaming and insulting and whatnot. This is not gonna work. We we wouldn't do it to you guys. We shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be doing it to us. And if the community, the Christian community, can hold their own to account like this and say, hold on, there's a better way. And then people, they look at this, say these these religious people, they're just nut jobs altogether. It just makes everybody look bad. Anyway, so with that said, I want to thank again my guest, and we're going to have to do it again, Hamza. Sorry, lost you there. And for everybody else, continue to tune in here to the Dean Show. And don't forget to pick up that free copy of the Quran at the deanshow.com website and call us if you have any questions. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the up and coming programs that we have for you. And we'll see you next time, inshallah. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. If you like this episode of The Dean Show, go ahead and click this video up here or up here for more. And don't forget to like all the videos so more people can go ahead and benefit just like you have. Hit that notification bell, subscribe. We'll, we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.